before I begin, in case anyone missed it, Russia has actually stepped up to the plate and accepted some South African Boer refugees. So, white pill of the day. Happy Friday the 13th. We're going to go into text 8 of the Bhagavad Gita. In case you weren't, you know what? It would, it would be really nice if it was just in a little playlist or something and it just went right through. Yeah, well, you you came to the wrong place for high production value, buddy. Translation. I can find no means to drive away this grief which is drying up my senses. I will not be able to dispel it even if I win a prosperous, unrivaled kingdom on earth with sovereignty like the demigods in heaven. Fort. Although Arjuna was putting forward so many arguments based on knowledge of the principles of religion and moral codes, it appears that he was unable to solve his real problem without the help of the spiritual master, Lord Sri Krishna. He could understand that his so-called knowledge was useless in driving away his problems, which were drying up his whole existence, and it was impossible for him to solve such perplexities without the help of a spiritual master like Lord Krishna. Academic knowledge, scholarship, high position, etc. are all useless in solving the problems of life. Health can be given only by a spiritual master like Krishna, therefore the conclusion is that a spiritual master who is 100% Krishna conscious is the bona fide spiritual master, for he can solve the problems of life. Lord Caitanya, Caitanya, Caitanya said that one who is master in the science of Krishna consciousness regardless of his social position is the real social master. Excuse me, spiritual master. Kiba Vipra, Kiba Nyasi Sugra Kinayaya, Ye Krishna Tatva, Tatva Vetya Sai Guru Heya. It does not matter whether a person is a Vipra, learned scholar in Vedic wisdom, or is born in a lower family, or is in the renounced order of life, if he is a master of the science of Krishna. He is the perfect and bona fide spiritual master. Caitanya Kar Kari Karitam Karitamrita Karitamrita Caitanya Karitamrita Madhya 8.128 So without being a master in the science of Krishna consciousness, no one is a bona fide spiritual master. It is also said in Vedic literature a scholarly Brahm Brahmana, expert in all subjects of Vedic knowledge, is unfit to become a spiritual master without being a a Vaisn Vaisnava. Vaisnava. Without being a Vaisnava. A Vaisnava. Or expert in the science of Krishna, Krishna consciousness. But a person born in a family of a lower caste can become a spiritual master if he is a Vaisnava. Or Krishna conscious. Padma Purana. The problems of material existence, birth, old age, disease, and death cannot be cannot be counteracted by accumulation of wealth and economic development. In many parts of the world there are states which are replete with all facilities of excuse me, faculties of life which are full of wealth and economically developed, yet the problems of material existence are still present. They are seeking peace in different ways, but they can achieve real happiness only if they consult Krishna, or the Bhagavad Gita, and the Srimad Bhagavatam, which constitutes the science of Krishna. Through the bona fide representative of Krishna, the man in Krishna consciousness. If economic development and material comfort could drive away one's lamentations for family, social, national, or international uh, inequities, then Arjuna would not have said that even an unrivaled kingdom on earth or supremacy like that of the demigods in the heavenly planets would be unable to drive away his, his lamentations. He sought, therefore, refuge in Krishna consciousness, and that it is the right path for peace and harmony. Economic development or supremacy over the world can be finished at any moment by the cataclysms of material nature. Even elevation into a higher planetary situation, as men are now seeking on the moon planet, can also be finished at one stroke. In one stroke. Hmm? At one stroke. Can also be finished at one stroke. The Bhagavad Gita confirms this. Skine punye martya lokam 
Vaisanti uh, when the results of pious activities are finished. One falls down again from the peak of happiness to the lowest states of life. Status of life. Many politicians of the world have fallen down in that way. Such downfalls only constitute more causes for lamentation. Therefore, if we want to curb lamentation for good, then we have to take shelter of Krishna, as Arjuna is seeking to do. So Arjuna asks Krishna to solve his problem definitely, and that it is the way of Krishna consciousness. Text 9. Saint Jaya said, Having spoken thus, Arjuna, chastiser of enemies, told Krishna, Govinda, I shall not fight. And fell silent. Purport. Dhritarashtra, Dhritarashtra must have been very glad to understand that Arjuna was not going to fight and was instead leaving the battlefield for the begging profession. But Saint Jaya disappointed him again in relating that Arjuna was competent to kill his enemies. <coughs> Excuse me. Er, Parantapa. Parantapa. I don't know, or, or is it par Parantapa? Although Arjuna was, for the time being, overwhelmed with false grief due to family affection, he surrendered unto Krishna, the Supreme Spiritual Master, as a disciple. This indicated that he would soon be free from the false lamentations resulting from family affection, and would be enlightened with perfect knowledge of self-realization, or Krishna consciousness, and would then surely fight. Thus, Dhritarashtra's joy would be frustrated, since Arjuna would be enlightened by Krishna and would fight to the end. Text 10 O descendant of Bar Bharata, Bharata, at the time Krishna, smiling in the midst of both the armies, spoke the following words to the grief-stricken Arjuna. Report. The talk was going on between intimate friends, namely the Hrsikesa and the Gurkesa. As friends, both of them were on the same level, but one of them voluntarily became a student of the other. Krishna was smiling because a friend had chosen to become a disciple. As Lord of all, he is always in the superior position as the master of everyone, and yet the Lord agrees to be a friend, a son, or a lover for a devotee who wants him in such a role. But when he was accepted as the master, he at once assumed the role and talked with the, the disciple like the master, with gravity, as it is required. It appears that the talk between the master and the disciple was openly exchanged in the presence of both armies so that all were benefited. So the talks of Bhagavad Gita are not for any particular person, society, or community, but they are for all, and friends or enemies are equally entitled to hear them. Hmm. So, so he turned May the Best Man Win into something incredibly based. Text 11. Translation. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, While speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor for the dead. Purport. The Lord at once took the position of the teacher and chastised the student, calling him indirectly a fool. The Lord said, You are talking like a learned man, but you do not know that one who is learned, one who knows what is body and what is soul, does not lament for any stage of the body, neither in the living nor in the dead condition. 
As explained in later chapters, it will be clear that knowledge means to know matter and spirit and the controller of both. Arjuna argued that religious principles should be given more importance than politics or society, excuse me, sociology. But he did not know that knowledge of matter, soul, and the supreme <sighs> is even more important than religious than religious for, formularies formularies and religious formularies. And because he was lacking in that knowledge, he should not have posed himself as a very learned man. As he did not happen to be a very learned man, he was consequently lamenting excuse me, for something which was unworthy of lamentation. The body is born and is destined to be vanquished today or tomorrow. Therefore, the body is not as important as the soul. One who knows this is actually learned, and for him there is no cause for lamentation, regardless of the condition of the material body. Hmm. Text 12 Translation Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be report. In the Vedas, in the Katha Upanishad, as well as in the uh, Svetasvatara Upanishads, Upan, Upanishad. Oh, is that what the dot under the S is for? S-H? Okay. People usually pronounce that Upanishad. It is said that the Supreme Personality of God... Oh, fuck. It is said that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the maintainer of the innumerable living entities. In terms of their indifferent situations according to individual work and reaction of, of work, that Supreme Personality of Godhead is also by his planetary portions... Pl plenari. Plenari portions. What is plenari? Alive in the heart of every living entity. Only saintly persons who can see within and without the same Supreme Lord can actually attain to perfect and eternal peace. Mm. The same Vedic truth given to Arjuna is given to all persons in the world who pose themselves as very learned, but factually have but a fore fund of knowledge. The Lord says clearly that he himself, Arjuna, and all the kings who are assembled on the battlefield are eternally individual beings, and that the Lord is eternally the maintainer of the individual living entities, both in their conditioned and in their liberated situations. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the Supreme Individual Person, and Arjuna, the Lord's Eternal Associate, and all the kings assembled there are individual eternal persons. It is not that they did not exist as individuals in the past, and it is not that they will not remain eternal persons. Their individuality existed in the past, and their individuality will continue in the future, without interruption. Therefore, there is no cause for lamentation for anyone. Excuse me. The Mayavadi theory that after liberation the individual soul separated by the covering of Maya or illusion will merge into the impersonal Brahman and lose its individual existence is not supported herein by Lord Krishna, the supreme authority. While well, Maya is all about that that uh, illusion, so that that, that makes sense. <coughs> that was the supreme authority. Nor is the theory that we only think of individuality in the conditioned state supported herein. Krishna clearly says herein that in the future, also, <sighs> also the individuality of the Lord and others, as it is confirmed in the Upanishads, will continue eternally. God, God damn it. Krishna clearly says herein that in the future also the individuality of the Lord and others, as it is confirmed in the Upanishads, will continue eternally. 
This statement of Krishna's is authoritative because Krishna cannot be subject to illusion. If individuality were not a fact, then Krishna would not have stressed it so much, even for the future. The Mayavadi may argue that the individuality spoken of by Krishna is not spiritual, but material. Even accepting the argument that the individuality is material, then how can one distinguish Krishna's individuality? Krishna affirms his individuality in the past and confirms his individuality in the future also. He has also confirmed his individuality in many ways, and impersonal Brahman has been declared to be subordinate to him. Krishna has maintained spiritual individuality all along. If he is accepted as an ordinary conditioned soul and individual consciousness, then his Bhagavad Gita has no value as authoritative scripture. A common man with all the four defects of human frailty is unable to teach that which is worth hearing. The Gita is above such literature. No mundane book compares with the Bhagavad Gita. When one accepts Krishna as an ordinary man, the Gita loses all importance. The Mayavadi argues that the the plu the plur, plu, plu, blah, 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 plurality mentioned in this verse is conventional, and that it refers to the body. But previous to this verse, such a bodily conception is already condemned. After condemning the bodily conception of the living entities, how was it possible for Krishna to place a conventional proportion on the body again? Therefore, individuality is maintained on spiritual grounds and is thus confirmed by great ak akaryas like Sri Ramanuja and others. It is clearly mentioned in many places in the Gita that the spiritual individuality is understood by those who are devotees of the Lord. Those who are envious of Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead have no bona fide access to the great literature. The non-devotee's approach to the teachings of the Gita is something like that of a bee licking on a bottle of honey. One cannot have a taste of honey unless one opens the bottle. Similarly, the mysticism of the Bhagavad Gita can be understood only by devotees, and no one else can taste it. As it is stated in the fourth chapter of the book, nor can the Gita be touched by persons who envy the very existence of the Lord. Therefore, the Mayavadi explanation of the Gita is a most misleading presentation of the whole truth. Lord Caitanya has forbidden us to read comment commentations made by the Mayavadis and warns that one who takes to such an understanding of the Mayavadi philosophy loses all power to understand the real mystery of the Gita. If individuality refers to the empirical universe, then there is no need of teaching by the Lord. The plurality of the individual soul and of the Lord is an eternal fact, and it is confirmed by the Vedas as above mentioned. Right, we have two more minutes. Let's see what we can do about text 13 on Friday the 13th. Oh yeah, set at 1818 because reasons. Translation. As the embodied soul continuously passes in this body from boyhood to the youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. A sober person is not bewildered by such a change. Report. Since every living entity is an individual soul, <sighs> Each is changing his body every moment, manifesting sometimes as a child, sometimes as a youth, sometimes as an old man. Yet the same spirit soul is there and does not undergo any change. This individual soul finally changes the body at death and transmigrates to a, another body. I have some interesting thoughts on that. And since, it's, since it is sure to have another body in the next birth, either material or spiritual, there was no cause for lamentation by Arjuna on account of death, neither for Bhaisma nor for Drona, for whom he was so much concerned. Rather, he should rejoice for their changing bodies from old to new ones, thereby rejuvenating their energy. Such changes of body account for, for varieties of enjoyment or suffering. <sighs> According to one's work in life. 
So Baisma and Drona, being noble souls, were surely going to have spiritual bodies in the next life, or at least life in heavenly bodies for superior enjoyment of material existence. So in either case, there was no cause for lamentation. Any man who has perfect knowledge of the constitution of the individual soul, the super soul, and nature, both material and spiritual, is called uh, Dira, or a most sober man. Such a man is never deluded by the change of bodies. Mm. The Mayavadi theory of oneness of the spirit soul cannot be entertained on the ground that the spirit soul cannot be cut into pieces as a fragmental portion. Such cutting into different individual souls would make the supreme cleavable or changeable against the principle of the supreme soul's being uh, three souls being unchangeable. I think I would have spelled it differently, maybe I said it wrong. As confirmed in the Gita, the fragmental portions of the supreme ex nah. as confirmed in the Gita, the fragmental portions of the supreme exist eternally, sanatana, and are called kasara. That is, they have a tendency to fall down into material nature. These fragmental portions are eternally so, and even after liberation, the individual soul remains the same, fragmental. But once liberated, he lives an eternal life in bliss and knowledge with the personality of Godhead. The theory of reflection can be applied to the supersoul, who is present in each and every individual body and is known as the Paramatma. He is different from the individual living entity. When the sky is reflected in water, the reflections represent both the sun and the moon and the stars also. The stars can be compared to the living entities and the sun and the moon to the Supreme Lord. The individual fragmental spirit soul is represented by Arjuna. And the Supreme Soul is the personality of God, Head Shri Krishna. They are not on the same level, as it will be apparent in the beginning of the fourth chapter. If Arjuna is on the same level with Krishna, and Krishna is not superior to Arjuna, then their relationship of instructor and instructed becomes meaningless. If both of them are diluted by the illusor illu 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 illusory energy, maya, what I just said, then there is no need for one being the instructor and the other the instructed. Teaching someone something is just trying to get them to remember something. <sighs> Such instruction would be useless because in the clutches of Maya, no one can be an authoritative instructor. Under the circumstances, it is, it is admitted that Lord Krishna is the Supreme Lord, superior in position to the living entity. Arjuna, who is a forgetful, forgetful soul, deluded by Maya, who is a forgetful soul, deluded by Maya. <sighs> oh, Alright, let's not make this more painful than it is supposed to be. Ah. We're over our 20 minute mark, and that was text 13 of chapter 2. Hope to see you in the futures.